Today, we're going to be demonstrating the latest feature of the Brickstore security platform, Immutavault, available in version 23.6 and newer. Immutavault is a cyber vaulting technology that provides guaranteed isolation and immutability for critical production data. It is applicability for compliance use cases as well as cyber recovery into an air gapped cleanroom. Immutavault provides a virtual air gap capability to provide protections and controls similar to a physical air gap but without the need to physically disconnect cables so that you can enable more frequent data transfers and rapid access to data when needed. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to log into the new hub user interface to create a vault. So I've logged in and I'm on the vault tab and I can see I have a few vaults already, but I'm going to create a new one. You can create a vault, which is a special type of data set from scratch or convert existing data sets into a vault. So to create a vault, I'm going to create one for the security logs for October in this case. And the first phase we're going to get into is the staging phase. That's where we load data into the vault. For this use case, I'm going to do that via SMB. By default, I'm a vault owner. I'm logged in as jhallstouch.adm with my storage admin account. But what's unique about Immutavault is our separation of duties and the ability to remove storage admins from being vault owners and make normal users vault owners, as well as the data owners could be vault owners. Anybody that is going to be responsible for managing the vault could be a compliance officer, depends on the use case. But what's key is vault owners have the power to uh, manage the vault, which en enables them to create the manifest for the vault seal the vault, as well as create views or export contents of the vault. And so we'll talk about that more as the demo goes on. So for now, I'm going to add two regular users as vault owners. And I'm actually going to remove myself as a vault owner to show the separation of duties. So I'll be able to provision the vault, but I won't be able to manage the vault. And so one of the next features is that you can set a minimum retention time. This is important if you want to prevent anyone, including a vault owner or admin, from destroying the vault before this time. So maybe you want to make sure that you retain records for five years for compliance purposes, or you want to protect that data against the cyber attack that's destructive. So you can choose your minimum retention time there. This can never be reduced, but it can be extended. You also have the ability to set an auto destroy time. Maybe for risk purposes, you need to keep the records for five years, but you don't want to keep them beyond five years. So you can set an auto destroy time for these security logs. I only want to keep them for 90 days. So I'm going to automatically destroy this vault after 90 days. So we already have our owners of the vault have full control. I'm also going to add Johnny as a user to be able to stage and load data into the vault. And I'm going to give him read write privileges. I have all the normal settings for provisioning an SMB share, things like quotas, reservations. I also am going to be protecting this with active defense while we're staging the vault and data protection policies and snapshots uh, in case we want to revert any versions or do anything while we're staging the vault. Now I go to the final screen and I'm giving a summary of those settings, which we can see those all look good. So I'm going to go ahead and create the vault. So now we see we're in uh, the first phase, we're in the staging vault. We see that I've done and created the vault. Just to show you that separation of duties, I'm not a vault owner. And so if I try to do things like generate the manifest for this vault, it's going to tell me I'm not an owner and my access is denied. So we're going to have to log in as a different user, which we will do momentarily. But for now, let's go look on the vault for the share. So if we go back here, we can see that the security logs October show up here. And I'm going to put a few logs into this vault. So I'm copying the October logs into it. All right. So they put some sample data in there. Now I'm going to go to Cindy's virtual desktop to uh, log in as her and manage the vault. So now I'm going to log in as Cindy. And I'm taking to the vault tab. We can see that there's the one we just created, the security logs October. She also is the owner of another vault here too. But for now, we're going to go into this vault. Since Cindy is a vault owner, she's going to generate the manifest for this. And what this is going to do is create a manifest which has the list of all the files in the vault as well as their cryptographic hash. This allows us to validate the contents of the vault at any time. And if we went back to that share, we would actually see that there's been a manifest document created. 
I'm going to open that up and show you what one looks like. So we can see the name of the data set here, the time the manifest was created, and then the list of files in the vault and the respective cryptographic hash for each file. So this is important because at any time, we're going to be able to validate that the contents of the vault are the same as when they were the vault was sealed. So if we wanted to, we could actually add uh, more contents to this vault and regenerate the manifest. But for now, in purposes of this demo, we're satisfied. So what we're going to do is go back to Cindy's desktop and we're actually going to seal the vault. Now, this operation is not reversible. So it's asking me to verify that I want to do this, and we do. So now it's going to go ahead. It's going to validate the contents of the vault against the manifest. It matches. We see we have those 13 files there. And so it shows that Cindy uh, has now sealed the vault. We can create a view, which is that read-only view at this time if desired. But if we go back to the vault, we will see that it actually is now isolated. It doesn't show up anymore. We can't access that. It's in that virtually air-gapped, secure, isolated area. And so now we have several actions as a vault owner that I can perform. I can verify the contents of the vault without exposing the contents of the vault. So at any time, I can validate that the contents are the same as when we sealed it. And we can see we quickly validated that right there. We can create that view. This creates a read-only view of the contents of the vault because the vault contents are immutable. So let's say for compliance reasons, you might have data that you've put into this vault. So for these security logs, we want to make sure that nobody's manipulated them. But in case of an audit, we might need to demonstrate or have a compliance officer review those logs. So we want to create that view. So I'm going to create a view. I'm going to expose it in this case via SMB. And by default, Cindy has access, as so is Dave. But maybe you have visiting or outside auditors that come in. You can also add those people to this as well. So I can add another user um, to this to show that they would have access. And I can restrict the access to that view to a specific subnet or host IP. Maybe all the auditors are sitting at specific computers or on a specific subnet. Also, I may know that this audit's only going to go on for a week. So I automatically want to close this read-only view after a week so that I don't have to remember to go back and turn to close the view. It'll automatically close itself. So I can create this view now. And if I browse to this, I can go to that same share as Cindy and actually look at the contents of the vault in that read-only view. So once again, I'm taking that, I can see this, and now I can view the actual files in the vault. I could also look at the manifest at any time. So it's quite uh, easy to navigate and go through this workflow as well. So at any time, I could also close the view, but it will auto-close in seven days. The other thing I can do is export the contents of the vault. So I could copy the contents of this data set to another data set that would then allow the user to manipulate or modify the data. This might be used in cases where maybe we have gold copies of data. We need to keep, think about seed data for an AI ML model, or maybe other research data. You want to be able to show that you continue to get the same results. So this allows you to have the ability to export the contents into another data set very rapidly. You can configure the vault at any time, change like the owners as people move. We can add new owners, replace owners, uh, all from here as well. And then when we're ready, we can also destroy the vault. Of course, if there's a minimum retention time, we can't destroy the vault until uh, that time or period has expired as well. And so you can review all of the features in the vault here at any time. So it's a very handy feature for a lot of use cases. One thing that's unique that I mentioned was the compliance aspect, right? You're able to at any time validate the contents and be confident that what was put into the vault at the time you sealed is still the same exact data that's there today. Beyond that, you know, sometimes people have to retain records for 10, 15, 20 years and hardware or the back end storage may get life cycled. With the way this is architected, you can refresh hardware, move data from different disk or capacity or cloud to cloud and ensure that all the controls around the data are still there. You have an exact copy that is immutable and it's the same data you put in when you seal the vault is the same data that you're getting out when you look to validate the contents of the vault or create a view of the vault. You also have the ability to use this to recover, right? If you need to quickly recover into a clean room environment or after cyber recovery where you want to get the specific versions of the files you want, and quickly recover, you can recover petabytes of data very rapidly. 
And our architecture does not require multiple arrays. You can do this on a single system or two or more systems, depending on what's dictated by your operational requirements. As I mentioned, this is available in version 23.6 and higher. So if you're an existing customer, this will be a feature you'll gain in your next upgrade. Or if you're a future customer, you could try our Jumpstart program and download our virtual edition of Brickstore and try this new capability in your environment and see how it can help you with your compliance and cyber recovery requirements.